Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's BarbaraGeorgeToon.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. Hang on, what do you got this morning? I got something familiar. It came in the mail again just the other day. One minute. Hmm. Boy, that is really, really good. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company, CAF. This is their uh, coffee round in the little Keurig cups that has two times the caffeine. <laughs> We've used this before on the show. And yeah, <laughs> you want to get going in the morning? Yeah, Black Rifle Coffee Company, CAF. This again is the uh, Coffee of the Month Club gift that I received from my nephew Jason, his wife Allison, and the boys. So that is absolutely fantastic. And we are using, once more, the uh, Linus and Snoopy Security Blanket Mug. How about that, huh? Isn't that great? Yeah, because it's summer. This is summer fun, <laughs> right? Snoopy on a, on a summer day. I know he's done it in the wintertime too, but you know, grabbing Linus's blanket and running off with it because it is warm. It is summer, the start of August, and I think we're already into the dog days <laughs> already. My gosh, hang on, one more sip. Hmm. And I'm glad I got a good hot cup of coffee because I read somewhere that um, if you want to get cool on a, on a warm day, drink something warm. Uh, have you ever heard that before? And you know, instead of drinking something like a cold lemonade, drink like a, a nice, nice hot cup of coffee and that will cool you down better than a, than a cold beverage. Has, have you ever heard that? I, 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 I think I heard that somewhere. Maybe I'm mistaken. If you have, comment below and let us know. And if there's any science behind it, let us know about that too. So it is warm. I got a t-shirt on and I'm wearing uh, short pants. <laughs> the AC is not on, uh, is not on, but I've got ceiling fans going and that sort of thing. So uh, I might be perspiring a little bit, but uh, we have witch hazel to uh, refresh myself and cool myself down. Here's this t-shirt. The um, See that right there? Rovers Rugby. My nephew Tom played for, for them uh, a few years ago. They're a rugby team. Uh, on the west side of Cleveland, I went to a few of their games, and uh, yeah, really entertaining uh, kind of uh, kind of sport. I really don't fully understand it, but it was kind of neat watching them run up and down the field and tackle each other. And how are, I don't know, it was kind of neat. It was it was different. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, so how are you this morning? Great to be with you. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. As we like to say on the show, a good hot coffee, a trusty mug. Let the caffeine go to work, gentlemen. Yeah, absolutely. One more sip. Hmm. That is really, really good. And again, twice the caffeine, so <laughs> it'll really get you going in the morning. And uh, as we like to say here on the program as well, if you're taking me along on your morning commute, thanks very much for the lift. I really do appreciate that. Uh, if For those of you who are listening to the podcast, thanks very much for tuning us in. Really do appreciate that. Now, I got to correct something. I had promised uh, to be using uh, on this episode a Trader Joe's instant coffee packet. And uh, I had mentioned either in Second Cup or the previous Monday morning mailbag, I can't remember which, that I was going to use this. And you know what? I went to my cupboard and I don't have any. <laughs> it's, they're not there. And, uh, you know, I made a mental note. Oh, I got to get some. And I forgot to get over to Trader Joe's. So uh, I'll have to get over there and get some more of these and we can compare Trader Joe's instant coffee packets, which are all dressed up with creamer and sugar right there. And we'll compare that to some of the other instant coffees we've used on the program. We've, we've featured this before, though. We featured this on the Monday Morning Mailbag and Second Cup. So it's not like uh, we're missing out on anything. We've featured this before. But I had said something about maybe using it on this episode, and I just forgot to get some. Thought I had some in the house. I was mistaken. However, uh, you know, Black Rifle Coffee Company, calf to the rescue. Absolutely. One more sip. Mm. That's absolutely fantastic. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We got a great show for you this morning. We got a great viewer shaving tip. We've got a shave den visit. Uh, we have some great refill comments. A lot of new wet shave gear. My gosh. <laughs> some great, great stuff to show you this week. And also some great questions and comments. So thanks very, very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. So let's get the show kicked off like we do every week with a viewer morning shaving tip.
This morning's shaving tip comes from viewer Rob Miller. And Rob writes, Good morning, Mark. I would like to offer a shaving tip or safety tip for wet shavers using a two or three piece razor. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way. When changing or installing the blade, use a towel to hold the head when tightening or loosening, especially when hands are wet and soapy. The head spinning in your hand does a number on the fingers. So take a second and grab that towel uh, Rob Miller. Hey, Rob, that is an absolutely fantastic practical tip. Thank you so much for sharing it. A great tip for all the uh, the new wet shavers out there as well, because, yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of us have made that mistake of not having a towel here to uh, assist when we are... Uh, installing a blade or taking a blade out, that sort of thing. And you know what? Before cameras rolled, I had a shave and just by force of habit, I grabbed the towel here and I put that razor head right in there because my hands were rather slick uh, after the shave and I was able to, you know, open up the, uh, the, the head of the cap of the base plate there. And of course, you know, when I have it like that, I also uh, will, when I'm, when I'm not on camera doing a shave, I'll, I'll sometimes use a towel to also install the blade as well. I know a lot of my reviews, I'm installing the blade rather carefully on camera, but I'm also making sure my hands are nice and dry. So uh, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic tip, Rob. Really, really do appreciate it. And again, a great tip that we may have, uh, we may have mentioned it before in the past, but a, another tip, it's another, it's another one of those tips great to revisit, especially for those out there who are new to wet shaving and who've, who have just subscribed to the channel and maybe they missed that episode. So thanks very much for an absolutely fantastic shaving tip. And to say thank you for you and only you, an original signed George sketch. So please email me your snail mail address to mondaymailbag at gmail.com, mondaymailbag at gmail.com, and I will send this to you post haste. And if you out there would like an original signed George sketch, just send me a shaving tip. Send that shaving tip to mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And if I use it here on the morning viewer shave, on the viewer morning, the morning, well, you know, the shaving tip that we talk about <laughs> every Monday morning on the Monday morning mailbag. If I use it in that segment, the viewer morning shaving tip segment, that's it. Uh, you too will receive an original signed George sketch. So Rob, thanks again for a really, really terrific tip. I really do appreciate it. Hey, we have a shave den visit this morning and it comes from viewer James Gazda, Jim from Northfield. He acquired some new gear for his shave den and he writes, Hey Mark, I thought I would share a photo of my new pearl razors. The one on the right is the hammer with extra base plate. The one on the bottom is the K2 dual handle razor. The one on the top is the L55 antique brass three piece razor. Can't wait to try these. Best of all, I got all of these brand new for just $50 free shipping on eBay. What a deal. I know you've reviewed these razors. It's what convinced me to purchase them. Thank you. Have a great week, Jim from Northfield. Wow, Jim, that's absolutely fantastic. A great deal on all three of those razors. Yes, we've reviewed all three of those razors, and I'll just give you a little synopsis on each one. The hammer, boy, this is hefty, and it's got a lot of growl for me. It's not a daily driver, but boy, this will definitely take care of three, four, five days worth of beard growth. And of course, it comes with that second base plate, an open comb base plate. So you get the straight bar and the uh, open comb base plate. Yeah, this is a substantial razor. <laughs> really, really a lot of weight, beautifully plated. And again, a little more growl. Uh, not a daily driver for me. Your mileage may vary. The K2 dual handle razor is wonderful. Uh, it comes with a long handle and a short handle. I prefer the longer handle, although the short handle, I've used it very, very nice. I've used this for both face shaves and head shaves. It really is terrific, mild and efficient, very, very smooth. The end tabs of a razor blade are enclosed in the razor head, and I like it. I also like the carving in the, in the handle on both the long handle and the short handle. Uh, really provides a great grip, and they also have the pearl name carved in there. I don't know if you can see that right there. See that? 
Yeah, that's a that's a really nice touch, but it really uh, allows for a really nice grip too because the flesh of your your fingers kind of press into those that 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 carving and uh, really affords a really really nice grip. I like that a lot. And finally, uh, the um, L55 uh, antique brass razor from uh, Pearl, uh, really really terrific terrific razor. It's less than twenty dollars, I think, uh, online at Amazon, some other outlets. Uh, where you can buy it, and it really is a mild shave, wonderfully efficient, very, very smooth, uh, really nice weight, uh, just a terrific, terrific razor. This is a great razor uh, to gift uh, a new wet shaver uh, because it's a three-piece razor. It looks great, a great price point. Uh, you can afford to buy you know a dozen of these for Christmas and give them out as gifts. That's That's, that's how... That's how low cost it is. I've seen the, I've seen this on sale for even I think less than fifteen dollars. I think at times, so check out uh, the sales uh, for the coming holiday season. I can't believe we're already talking about that, <laughs> but the coming holiday season, this this might be on sale, so you can get a really nice deal uh, on this razor. You can buy several as as Christmas gifts, holiday gifts, absolutely. But it really does give a nice mild shave. And uh, it looks great, and uh, I've enjoyed it. I've done face shaves and head shaves with it, and uh, yeah, really, really terrific. So all these razors from Pearl are really, really terrific. And Jim, you got a great deal if you got three of those uh, for just fifty bucks with free shipping, brand new on eBay. Wow, that is terrific. These are really, really well priced, well made razors. And again, um, your mouths may vary. Uh, but uh, yeah, this hammer, that's got a little bit of growl for me. But the other two, the uh, L55 and the K2, uh, beautiful, beautiful, mild razors, nice efficiency, and I really enjoy both of those. Uh, mild enough for me to use with a head shave. So Jim, congratulations on the new acquisitions for your shave den, and thanks for sharing with all the viewers. Really do appreciate it. Well, my thanks to viewer Aaron Watson for sending along this heads up and reminder regarding the Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. Uh, and Aaron writes, hey, Mark, I thought I would pass along that I saw on Facebook the tickets for the 2024 Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup have gone on sale. They are limiting attendance to 50 people this year. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Aaron Watson. Aaron, thanks very, very much for the reminder. Yes, I already have my ticket. Folks, get out there and get a ticket. They're limiting it to only 50 attendees. So here's what they have to say here. And we will link both to the Facebook page and also to the main page where you can get tickets. 2024 Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup, Saturday, September 14th, 2024, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m., at River's Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. And as they write here, it's the fourth annual Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. Our overhead went down, so yours does too. This year's ticket price is just $5. We are thankful to have River's Edge Cutlery as our host for this year's event. Due to space, we must cap attendance at 50 Get your tickets early to ensure your spot at the event. Oh, and they're also going to have a meetup soap and splash for all attendees. Shannon Soap and Spearhead Shaving are teaming up to bring you Woody's Victories, a woody, floral, and spicy argar wood base with a clean, ozonic freshness and subtle greenness throughout. Wow, <laughs> that sounds great. And uh, we're bringing in food trucks. Uh, there will be a few options from which to choose, but we're looking to make it tasty and affordable. We'll announce the trucks when we get them finalized. More sponsors, more prizes. You'll be entered into a drawing for great prizes from Shannon Soaps, Spearhead Shaving, The Gentle Shave, Timeless Razor, Sterling Soap Company, and many more. And of course, they'll have a uh, PIF table and a lot of other great details. We'll link to it so you can get up there and read all about it. But the highlights sound absolutely amazing. I've got my ticket. Five bucks gets you a ticket. They're limiting it to only 50 attendees. So get a ticket now before it's sold out. 
This is an absolutely wonderful wet shaving meetup and uh, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic venue over at Rivers Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. So my thanks to Aaron Watson for very kindly uh, sending along the reminder and also uh, getting the links to us so that we, we can share them with all of you out there. All that information was very kindly posted by Michael Fairdale, who is also helping with uh, the festivities of this year's Wet Shave Meetup, and uh, James German being uh, the gentleman who is kind of spearheading this entire Wet Shave Meetup project. So, gentlemen, thank you all again very, very much for the great reminder. Mark your calendar. The Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup this year, September 14th, 2024, from 11.30 a.m. to 3 o'clock p.m., Rivers Edge Cutlery in Hilliard, Ohio. Get that ticket before they're all sold out. Oh, want to mention this as a highlight regarding this year's Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup. As they write here, the meetup gives back to the community. The Ohio Wet Shavers Meetup is proud, once again, to support the Children's Cancer Research Fund through Barb Kais and the Great Cycle Challenge. Over the past six years, Barb has ridden over 1,100 miles and raised nearly $17,000. For the fourth year in a row, our own Dave Kais will be holding a raffle in support of Barb's efforts for some super shaving prizes from all the great artisans. Last year, the OWSM donation to the raffle won a prize package from Pasteur Shaving, which will be given away at this year's meetup. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. So again, folks, a uh, great, great event, and it's also helping a great cause. So my thanks to Dave and Barb Kais. We'll have more information regarding their fundraiser as well in the weeks to come. And uh, get your ticket to a really, really terrific meetup. You not only have a great time, but you're also helping a really, really good cause. Well, here's your weekly reminder that the Monday Morning Mailbag is also available as a podcast. Simply get up to your favorite streaming service and search for Monday Morning Mailbag and more, Monday Morning Mailbag and more, and the Monday Morning Mailbag podcast, as well as our other podcast, Second Cup, will come right up. Both of those podcasts are available on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and now right here on YouTube. Well, what do you know? Coffee's getting low that time of the show. Let's go back for a refill. Well, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. I hope you went back for a refill. I sure did. Hang on. One more sip here. Hmm. Boy, that is, ter that is terrific. Wow, that's got a great flavor to it. And uh, ha -ha. <laughs> you know it's good when you're going in for an extra sip. Absolutely fantastic. Again, from Black Rifle Coffee Company, Calf. Twice the caffeine, boy. This will get you going in the morning. And you know what? A big, big thank you to viewer Jimmy V Photography for this beautiful and delightful peanuts uh, coffee mug, uh, the uh, Linus and Snoopy security blanket mug. There's Linus on that side, and let's turn around here and show you Snoopy on the other side grabbing that security blanket. It's just an absolutely delightful, delightful coffee cup and uh, coffee mug. And, uh, you know, it's got that summertime vibe outside running around, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So a big, big thank you to Jimmy V for this for this mug. It's just a it's just a wonderful, delightful mug and uh, makes the coffee all the more enjoyable. Hang out one more sip. Hmm. All right. We'll set that aside there. Boy, that's good. That's good coffee and a really terrific, terrific mug. Let's get to some of these refill comments. Hey, Al Spencer wrote, you know, since it's my face, my rules, I always go for the BBS. The wife loves the feel of my smooth face, and so do I. I find that the keys are a good pre-shave routine, a quality shave soap, a good blade and razor pairing, then followed by an Allen block, witch hazel, balm, and aftershave. Rarely do I experience razor burn and can't remember my last ingrown hair. Full disclosure... 
being retired, I have the time to enjoy the moment. Yeah, we shared this comment in uh, last week's Second Cup podcast, but it is just such a great comment that we're sharing it again here on the Monday Morning Mailbag. It's a great reminder to everyone out there, if you're doing the traditional wet shave, take your time, do all the proper prep, and you'll get a great result. Now, if your routine is such that you got to dash out the door in the morning, hey, you can always shave at night before you turn in and get a great result, and that should last you through the remainder of your day, That you know, starting with the next morning. Uh, and uh, a lot of wet shavers out there will do that. They prefer to shave at night, and then that way they're clean shaven in the morning and they can get on with their day. Or if you want to shave in the morning, just you know, get up. 30 minutes earlier and and just do the shave and take your time with it. And, uh, you know, that it, just, it, it, it is just such a great way to shave. And again, as I've always said, this is a great time to be doing the traditional wet shave because there is so much available uh, from artisan shave soaps to razors to blades to aftershave balms, uh, shaving bowls and mugs and scuttles. It's just so much great wet shave gear out there to make your traditional wet shave, your morning shave, or your evening shave all the more enjoyable. So, Al, thanks very much for a great, great reminder. Really, really do appreciate that. This comes from Rod Sloan, 706. G'day, Mark. Melbourne. Hey, this is all the way from down under. Rod, thanks so much for checking in. Great Monday morning mailbag, as usual. Tuesday morning, July 30th here. (laughs) That's right, because of the time difference. You're absolutely right about the Thayers. Been using it for nearly two years now, post alum block routine. I find it helps just that little bit more before I go to the splash than balm, or uh, he says here, balm star jelly. I still regard the alum routine as necessary with the Thayers not replacing it. And of course, applying the Thayers after the alum is eventually rinsed off. Uh, as for helping my anti-aging, NUP, well, he's right here, NUP, N-U-P. I guess that's, is that, is that down under ease for NOPE, N-O-P-E? <laughs> I think it is. NUP, can't claim that one. Thoroughly enjoy Monday Morning Mailbag and your reviews. Take care, Mark. P.S. Taylor of Old Bond Street, uh, Eaton College, amazing shave cream, even better when matched with Splash than Cologne. Great throughout the day hold. Yeah, thanks for uh, mentioning uh, Eaton College uh, shave cream. Uh, Mark Bagwell did a review on this in the uh, last week's Monday Morning Mailbag. Check it out if you missed it. This is an absolutely fantastic shave cream and a wonderful, wonderful scent. So, yeah, thanks for that, uh, Rod. Thanks for the vote for that. And, yeah, Thayers, we've been talking about Thayers. I have both here the original Witch Hazel and the uh, Facial Toner Witch Hazel original, but it's alcohol-free, and I've been using both of them. And like you, I have not been skipping the alum block. I've, I said I was going to skip the alum block, but I find myself using the alum block. I did skip uh, one shave uh, a couple days ago, skipped the alum block, and I thought, nah, I, I, I got to use that alum block. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be using the alum block on camera, off camera, when I use... Uh, the Witch Hazel. And I have been enjoying this uh, as well. It's been an absolute, absolutely terrific addition to my post-shave routine. So, Rod, thanks very, very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, this comes from Sam Hillenbrand, uh, 6291. Hey, Mark, great show. Thanks for the shout-out regarding soap scents for the fall and winter. Razor Emporium Sandalwood is truly my favorite sandalwood, but... Taylor of Old Bond Street is right on its heels in second. Also, when discussing about teardrop handle razors, there is also Parker's 111B, which has some heft to it and is a mild razor. Have a great week. Hey, thanks very much for that, Sam. I am not familiar with the uh, Parker 111B. I'm going to have to look into that and check that out and find that on Amazon. Thanks very much for the recommendation. Of course, we talked about these uh, razor handles in last week's Monday Morning Mailbag, and I pointed out that the Mocha uh, razor from uh, Global Shave Clubs International has this teardrop handle. Mark Bagwell reminded me that the Edwin Jagger Chatsworth uh, is also a teardropped handled razor. So if you're looking for 
uh, a teardropped handle razor. Check out the Parker 111B or the Chatsworth from Edwin Jagger. So thanks very much for that, Sam. And thanks to Mark Bagwell for that little piece of information as well. Bob LaRoe wrote, uh, today's tip, there are lots of ways to scrape some soap out of a container. Poker chips, guitar picks, butter knives, etc. I hadn't thought of a tongue depressor. Yeah, that was a previous shaving tip, viewer morning shaving tip that we had. Just get a tongue depressor. You can get them from your <laughs> get them from your doctor. Hey doc, you know, you got a few of those I can borrow? <laughs> and they make uh, a great little tool to scrape out some shave soap. Uh, I hadn't thought of it either. It's just kind of a like a Kind of a no-brainer. Kind of like, why didn't I think of that? It was a really, really terrific shaving tip. I agree, Bob. Uh, really, really terrific. This comes from Stephen M. 1563. Nice to see the new TI Razor. I have been on the pre-order list for a while. I'm excited for Wednesday. Have a great week, Mark. Uh, yeah, this is uh, regarding the uh, TI Glide S1 from Tightener. We did a review on it this past Wednesday. We talked about it also on the Monday Morning Mailbag. Here it is right here. Absolutely fantastic razor. It's a single-edge razor, and you're using it at about a 17-degree angle here. Boy, does this deliver a close, smooth shave. It has a magnetic cap that attaches to the, the base plate and also this little knob in the back here. Also... Uh, acts as uh, a little clamp to tighten down that uh, cap on the base plate so everything is nice and secure. Alignment is spot on. End tabs are enclosed in the razor head. Titanium, absolutely wonderful, wonderful razor. And uh, we, had, uh, we had a review that ran this past Wednesday. We also talked about it on the previous Monday morning mailbag. And the folks at Tightener were very, very kind enough to uh, send one along to the channel. And uh, Ken Surf's also got one. Subi Shaves got one. Uh, and I think the Italian Shaver got one. So check out their reviews as well uh, and see what they have to say about it. But I got such a delightful shave with it. It really is terrific. It's a terrific razor. It really, really is. So, uh, Steve, when you receive yours, please uh, let us know how you like it. Uh, feel free to send in a review and we will share it with all the viewers. So thanks very much for your comment. Uh, Wittar7090 wrote, Ethanol will be in witch hazel through steam distillation. Thayers may use an additional process step that removes the ethanol through additional distillation, extraction, or some other process. I'll add that the main compounds distilled out of the witch hazel plant, excluding ethanol, are in whatever witch hazel product you use. I believe that the person that brought it up in Monday Morning Mailbag is correct if regulatory agencies define witch hazel as containing ethanol and Thayer's removes it, then it most likely does not meet the definition of witch hazel. There are most likely benefits of the compounds sans ethanol, but I have no idea what they may be. Yeah, this is regarding uh, whether or not uh, Thayer's with... Uh, alcohol in it, the original witch hazel, or Thayer's witch hazel, which is, which is alcohol-free, is an actual witch hazel. I, you know, I've been using them both, but to be honest with you, I've been using the original one with alcohol because I want that antiseptic quality from the, from the alcohol. Now, a lot of uh, wet shavers out there will use the alcohol-free version uh, because um, the alcohol may dry their skin. And uh, this has aloe vera in it. Uh, this, this also has aloe vera in it, the one with alcohol. But either one, you know, try them both. See how they work for you, your face, your rules, that sort of thing. But I've been using the one with alcohol. And it's been a great, great addition to my post-shave routine. And there was a discussion in the previous Monday Morning Mailbag uh, whether or not uh, removing the alcohol still makes it a witch hazel. So um, I, I'm sure that uh, we'll have more discussion on that. So Wittar7090, thanks very much for that input. Really do appreciate it. Oh, Wittar7090 also sent this along regarding the real shave razor that we talked about in previous Monday morning mailbags. Uh, and he writes here, uh, if the oil did solidify, uh, then something like WD-40, which acts as a solvent, might loosen it so the knob will turn. If it's rust, then it may be able to loosen it as well. I suspect uh, that uh, I suspect that if it's rust, then probably will not work. 
Uh, I would spray, pour it on the moving parts and let it sit for 10 minutes or so to give it a chance to dissolve the solidified oil. I use WD-40 to remove uh, Cosmolin from antique items. Cosmolin was used to protect metal parts on items that were intended to be stored for some time. If the oil in the razor did solidify, then I suspect that it would be similar to Cosmolin. I've never heard of that. Cosmolin, C-O-S-M-O-L-I-N-E. And it's not really the razor. The razor's fine. You know, the razor's fine. You can open up the door here and see that? The razor's fine. And then this little lever here, this turns. It's not a problem. It's when you put in one of these cartridges, the, one of these older cartridges, they're like new old stock. They've been sealed up. Now, this one is already open. It's, and it has a blade. It has a ribbon blade in it. We'll show it to you again. It has this ribbon blade right here. Okay, see that? And the idea is... You put this in the uh, you put this in like this, okay. Let's see if we can get this loaded up again, okay. You put that in there like that, and then you close it, all right. And then uh, you tighten this down, right, like that. We'll show it to you one more time. Now you can shave with that blade edge right there, okay. Shave with that, and then when it becomes dull, you just turn this knob here, and then that will. Oh, look at that! Oh, it's turning. Hey, is it moving? I don't think it's moving. I think it's slipping. Well, it's turning, okay? But what that does, it's not turning smoothly. It should turn smoothly. Uh, it's turning. Well, you can see it's turning. But anyhow, it advances the ribbon blade in there so you can get a fresh edge after the, uh, the edge that you've used has become dull. Kind of a neat idea. So I don't think this one is working that well either. It's kind of jumpy in there. So it's not really, I think it's slipping is what it is. I think this gear little here, this this hole, this gear is 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 stripped, I think, is what's going on. Either this one or this one. I can't remember. But anyhow, <laughs> I don't know which one it is. But anyhow, that's the real shave. And to be perfectly honest with you, if I have to uh, use a WD-40 or something like that, uh, it, I don't know. I'm just afraid that there might be some rust or something in there. It's not. It's, you know what? It's a nice item to look at. If I come across one of these cartridges that I know is perfectly safe and, uh, uh, you know, moves freely in the razor head, and then I know that it's that it's fine, then I might shave with it. But for now, kind of a neat thing to look at. And uh, yeah, so got this from my uh, my late Uncle Ernie. He sent this, he gave this to me. I guess he used it. He never really mentioned if this worked for him or not, but he gave it to me and it really is kind of a neat piece of shaving history, the real shave. All right, so thanks very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Wittar7090. Viewer Bart Buzz wrote, uh, regarding that real shave razor, have you tried placing the head in hot water to see if that would loosen the cassette? You know what? I haven't. That's a really, really good idea. But again, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I, I, you know, I don't know. I would rather come across one that just works and then it'll tell me that it's, it's, it, that it's held up over all these years. Uh, I, I need to do a little more research on this. Maybe there's somebody else out there in the know that understands this razor and can give me some reliable information on uh, getting a good cartridge and the, and, and, and the safety aspect of it. Because I don't want to take a chance using a, a blade that is so old that it, might, uh, that it might be imperfect and might cause, I don't know, you know, it has a little bit of rust in there or something like that. That, that would be bad. <laughs> so again, I think it's just something that I'm going to look at and admire and say, look at that. I've got a real shave from back in the day. Uh, and again, I used it, uh, gee whiz, uh, a number of years ago. I don't know how many, but the, car the cassettes were working and everything was fine. I just wish I had uh, understood the proper prep in doing the traditional wet shave because I think I probably would have stayed with this razor and probably would have gone all through those cartridges. To be perfectly honest with you, I probably would have used all of them. Uh, because I think it had the, I think it felt like it was going to give a good close shave. It's just that I wasn't using the proper protection, the proper shaving, shaving soap, shaving cream to get a really, really good lather as we do right now. So yeah, um, so I don't know. You know, it's like I say, it's nice. I'll admire it. I think it's a good suggestion, Bart. But I don't know if I'm going to do <laughs> anything like that. Uh, when it comes to how much shaving soap or cream to use, it's fun to see how little product to use. But why? We all have enough soap to last a lifetime. I agree. Load away. <laughs> Load away. I mean, look at the Eaton College here. You know, I mean, 
look at that. I mean, that's kind of shifted a little bit in the in the in the tub, but my gosh, just load away and just use it. You can always get more, you know? Absolutely. So I, I agree. Just go ahead and make as make as much lather as you want. Make heaps and heaps and heaps of lather. Enjoy the traditional wet shave. I absolutely agree. Uh, thanks very much for that, Bart. Really do appreciate it. Uh, clean shave dad wrote, I'm wondering if you heat that cartridge up, if the lubricant would go back to a more liquid state. Yeah, again, uh, another great suggestion for heating up the cartridge. Uh, again, I, you know, I don't know if, if I get adventurous, maybe I'll give it a try, but I would much rather find a cartridge that I knew was going to work right off the bat and would be safe and, uh, not have any uh, contamination, so to speak. Uh, and I'm thinking that these cartridges that I have, because I'm not able to turn them and everything, that I'm thinking in the back of my mind, maybe some rust is built up. It's not worth it. Again, I'll put it on the shelf in the shave den and I'll admire it. Look at that, the real shave. <laughs> that sort of thing. So thanks for that clean shave, Dad. I, I appreciate that. More than one viewer out there kind of on the same page with heating up uh, the cartridge. Uh, Neil from Oz, another viewer from Down Under. Witch Hazel or not Witch Hazel, all I know is that Thayer's works for me. Hey, that's great to hear. I really do appreciate it. And uh, this was followed up by Ecstatic Temporality, who wrote, uh, I just started Thayer's with my shaving routine, and thus far I've noticed an appreciable difference. Well, that's great to hear. And again, I'm using it post-shave in all of my shaves, and I'm really, really liking it. And I think... I think there's something going on there. I really do. I think I am seeing a little bit of a positive difference in my skin as well. So we're going to continue to use it. And again, I'm using uh, the one with alcohol. And I have been switching back and forth from alcohol to non-alcohol. But uh, again, I'm going to be using the Allen Block uh, consistently again in my post-shave routine. So it'll be, it'll be uh, rinse routine, then Allen Block, then wait, then rinse the Allen Block off then witch hazel, then wait, then splash and balm. That's what uh, I've been doing post-shave routine, and, I, and it's been great. It's absolutely wonderful. So thanks for that, gentlemen. Really do appreciate it. Oh, here, Mark Vernick also has some great information regarding witch hazel, and he wrote, Mark, did a quick search on witch hazel, posted the one in the comments from the FDA. Here is a synopsis of what else I found. Hope it helps. I found it very interesting and hope you do as well. We are both non-chemists, but Thayer's has a great article posted below. Sincerely, Mark Vernick. Now, this is from the Thayer's website. We'll, uh, we'll link it below. And they write, Witch Hazel naturally contains 8 to 12% tannins, but the alcohol content depends on the extraction process. Most witch hazel extracts are distilled with denatured alcohol, ethanol, resulting in a final product with around 14 to 15% alcohol. However, some brands like Thayer's use alcohol-free extraction methods. Uh, so here is, uh, here's what they write here. Alcohol-based extraction, the most common extraction method, which preserves uh, eugenol, uh, potential allergen, and skin irritant. Alcohol-free extraction uh, uses water or steam distillation to create an alcohol-free product. Alcohol-free witch hazel is ideal for sensitive skin, body washes, foaming products, and high temperatures. We'll link to that below where you can get all that information. Mark, thanks very, very much for that. And that wraps up this week's refill segment. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some new wet shaving gear. Well, the review ran this past Friday. If you missed it, check it out. Uh, new from Phoenix Shaving, Camp Phoenix right here. Boy, is this a marvelous, marvelous scent. When I first opened this up, it absolutely grabbed my attention as summer, summer camp by a lake. Absolutely, absolutely fantastic. My gosh. Uh, and here is the scent profile. Uh, mesquite wood, pine and white sage fire with white birch, tar, charcoal, and spice notes. A virtual smellscape. 
Uh, Camp Phoenix is canoe trips and starfish sailing boats afloat Lake Little Nessie. Bigfoot's edible flora and bug identification, trail walks, Mothman's candlelight night hikes, clown fruits, face painted capture the flag, Wendigo wilderness survival course, Lost Dutchman's Grim Rapids, Gold Panning, Skinwalker Soccer, Spring Heeled Jack's Jumping Rope Course, Space Time Hand Drumming, Doug's Dowsing Wood Whittling Hour, The Talking Stick, but not the one you remember, and lastly, Chef Chupacabra's Annual End of Summer Weenie Roast, and a final evening of flickering facelit flashlight ghost tales told around a grand and crackling fire. Smells just like this. It does. <laughs> it absolutely does. It captures all that great summertime camp fun. It's the great outdoors. Oh, it's the great outdoors. Buy a campfire. Buy a lake. Out there. Capture the flag. Red Rover, Red Rover. Can Douglas come over? It's all of that, really. It is fantastic. I really, really love this scent. And I happened to mention during the review that, um, yeah, August is kind of like uh, summer winding down. You think, hey, there's plenty of summer left. Absolutely. And I remember a lot of my friends going off to a summer camp in August. Yeah, and that's, uh, yeah. And that <laughs> that's what I remember. And again, we're just getting, I mean, it's warm right now, you know, dog days of summer during the month of August. Yeah, so this is perfect for that. Absolutely. It's an absolutely wonderful summertime scent. You can also use this year round. It really is terrific. On those cold winter days, you know, break this out and um, relive summer memories on those cold winter days when you need a summer lift. Yeah, this would be perfect for it. Camp Phoenix from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, boy, this just dropped. Uh, my thanks to Doug, Fran, Huxley, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving for very kindly sending this to the channel and allowing me to share with all the viewers. We'll have links below, folks. A really, really wonderful, wonderful summertime scent. Again, Camp Phoenix from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, thanks, Doug, Fran, Hux, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving. We'll have links below. Viewer Tim Whitcup sent along this heads up about a brand new razor from Eula, the Neo, N-E-O, introducing our latest safety razor edition, the Neo. Designed for beginners and enthusiasts, this new series boasts a fresh, sleek design with flawless finishes. Featuring handles of cool chrome, the Neo is accented by bands of calm glacier blue, pastel salvia green, and classic black. Soft, non-slip line bands ensure the perfect grip during wet shaving. Wow, they even have matching shave brushes. Looks absolutely fantastic. We'll link it below where you can find the new Mula Neo Razor. It looks absolutely fantastic. My thanks to Tim Whitcup for the heads up on this one. Tim, thanks very much. Again, folks, from Mula the Neo, a brand new razor, also some matching shaving brushes you can see from the, uh, the photograph there. We'll link it below. Thanks again, Tim. Hey, the folks at Supply have a brand new razor. Uh, and as they write here, new. Meet the Travel Ready SE Disposable Razor. Just like our best-selling Single Edge SE, these premium disposable razors are engineered to provide a safe, smooth and irritation-free single blade shave. With fixed stainless steel blades, they're convenient and travel ready so you can take them with you wherever you go. Nick Stop technology reduces nicks and cuts by 75%, consciously crafted with 65% ocean-bound plastic and 35% wheat straw, good for eight to 10 shaves per razor, travel friendly, and you get a uh, five pack of these disposable SE razors for only $15. That's really, really terrific. And again, they are the disposable version of their wonderful Supply SE Single Edge Injector Razor. I absolutely love this razor. This is my go-to razor for head shaves. Also fantastic for face shaves. It really is terrific. And now you don't have to take this one and uh, worry about losing it. You can take 
a disposable SE razor with the same Nick Stop technology. Uh, get a five pack for 15 bucks and each of those is good for eight to 10 shaves. So we'll link it below where you can find it at the supply website. Wow, that is really, really neat. My thanks to Jim from Northfield and the folks at Supply for sending along the heads up. I received this email from viewer Abane Samant, and he writes, Hi, Mark. Hope you're enjoying this beautiful summer. Based on your recommendation, my wife bought the complete Crab, Apple, and Newton collection for my birthday. About 25 or so years back, I used to wear the Crabtree and Evelyn sandalwood cologne, which my wife loved, but is unfortunately gone and cannot be replaced. However, this is a pretty close substitute. I would say it's a little bit lighter than the original when it comes to the sandalwood, but a bit more spice. But regardless, it is absolutely superb. It brings back a lot of great memories. Products work flawlessly, and I am looking forward to using them for a long, long time. Thanks again for the great recommendation. Warmest regards, Abby. P.S. You gotta love the bronze closed comb timeless razor with a Lord blade. Perfect BBS shave with no nicks, cuts, or irritation. Abby, <laughs> great to hear of the wonderful shave you had with the uh, Crab Apple and Newton from Phoenix Shaving and the timeless razor, bronze razor. Absolutely fantastic. You inspired me. Uh, so I used both of these before cameras rolled and got an absolutely wonderful, wonderful shave. Now, I didn't use a Lord Platinum blade. I like those a lot. I used a Wisimet blade this time around and got an absolutely spectacular, spectacular shave. And yeah, this bronze razor from Timeless Razor is absolutely wonderful, folks. If you're looking for a really nice upscale gift for the wet shaver in your life, check this out. And also, uh, the stand is absolutely wonderful as well. Yeah, Abby got his at the uh, recent Maggard meetup this past April, and uh, he bought it from the guys at Timeless Razor right there at the meetup, and it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful razor, and he's loving it. So check it out. This is an absolutely fantastic, fantastic razor from the guys at uh, Timeless Razor. We'll have a link to all their wonderful uh, items that you can get online from the folks at Timeless Razor. But uh, Crab Apple and Newton is an absolutely glorious scent really, really wonderful. It's refined. It's gentlemanly. It is perfect for an evening night out. Uh, whether it's summer, fall, winter, or spring, this one is just absolutely fantastic. I like it a lot, and it just delivered a wonderful, wonderful shave. So uh, just a reminder about uh, Crab Apple Newton from Phoenix Shaving, uh, which is their homage to Crabtree and Evelyn. It really is a terrific, terrific uh, shaving soap and a great, great scent. So we will have links below to this. My thanks again to Doug, Fran, Huxley, and everyone at Phoenix Shaving for passing this one along to the channel and allowing me to share with all the viewers. And Abby, thanks very much for uh, the reminder and the endorsement of this. And wow, kudos and bravo to your wife for picking up an absolutely fantastic gift for your birthday. My gosh, Again, bravo to her. That's absolutely outstanding. So thanks again, Abby. Really do appreciate it. I received this email from viewer Chris Bodrab. And of course, Chris has shared a lot of great information with fellow wet shavers and viewers here on the Monday Morning Mailbag. This time around, he writes, Hi, Mark. I know over the past few episodes, people have been talking a lot about Thayer's Witch Hazel Facial Toner. I was first introduced to this by Dave Martin on his channel, Ohio Shaves, and have been a huge fan ever since. Like many people, I really enjoy a number of the artisan splashes, but I will often use Thayer's after the Allen block, let it dry, then apply a splash and or balm. If I am not going to use or don't have a matching balm, I will sometimes customize the unscented Thayer's by adding some fragrance oils for the scent. I find a total of 20 to 40 drops per bottle usually does a nice job. The first one I did, I just used peppermint oil, which provided a really nice peppermint aftershave. 
The second one I did, I did after purchasing P&J Trading's Gentleman's Fragrance Collection from Amazon. This is a really nice package containing six fragrance oils, leather, bay rum, sweet tobacco, sandalwood, teakwood, and cedar. I think the last one I did was a combination of 10 drops leather, 10 drops sweet tobacco, five drops sandalwood, five drops teakwood, and five drops cedar. It's a great and inexpensive way to make a custom splash. Another product is Nivea Sensitive Cool Cooling Post Shave Balm. This is another great product that is inexpensive and is my go-to balm if the shave soap I'm using did not offer a balm in their line. Links below for products mentioned above. Hey, Chris, thanks very, very much for some great product recommendations, but also we really, really like the P&J Trading's Fragrance Oil Gentleman Set, uh, which will give you leather, sweet tobacco, teak wood, bay rum, cedar, and sandalwood, uh, so you can scent your own unscented Thayer's Witch Hazel. That sounds marvelous. Folks, we'll have a link to P&J uh, Trading's uh, fragrance oil scent, as well as the Thayer's alcohol-free and unscented facial toner, and also Nivea Men's Sensitive Cool Cooling Post Shave Balm. We've talked about that one before on the show, but it's also a great reminder to revisit it again. It really is a terrific, terrific product. So Chris, thanks again for the great product recommendations, especially P&J Trading's fragrance oil gentleman set. Really, really do appreciate it. Pura Andrew Hill sent this along regarding sandalwood soaps, and he writes, Great show this week. I enjoyed the discussion of the sandalwood soaps out there. I agree about Taylor of Old Bond Street. Great soap. Yeah, this shaving cream is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful sandalwood scent. You can see I've been using it. This is like my favorite sandalwood scent. I really like this one a lot. Of course, this is the first sandalwood scented shaving product that I used uh, when I came back to the traditional wet shave, so I am biased, but it is a terrific, terrific sandalwood scent. Yeah, I really like this a lot. And of course, the performance of Taylor of Old Bond Street uh, shave cream is absolutely spectacular. Yeah, so we like it a lot. Anyhow, he continues here. Uh, great soap. One of my favorites, though, that doesn't seem to get mentioned as often is Suzy Banna. Now, that's spelled capital S U E, capital Z, capital B. A-N-A, -A, and I believe it's pronounced Suzy Banna. Uh, it's a fantastic soap and scent, and it leaves a wonderful poche feel on your skin. For me, it's my favorite sandalwood. Highly recommend to anyone who hasn't tried it yet to get a tub. Again, great show. Keep up the great work. Hey, well, thanks very much for the recommendation on Suzy Banna sandalwood shave soap. Let me say that again. <laughs> Suzy Banna sandalwood shave soap. Wow, say that five times. Thanks very much for that recommendation, Andrew. Uh, Paul H. Films has a few videos featuring Suzy Banna sandalwood shave soap. Actually, he has one where he shows a complete set of Suzy Banna uh, shave soap. So we'll link to that one and another one where he discusses uh, this particular product. So my thanks to uh, Paul H. Films for making those available. We'll link them below. And thanks again to uh, Andrew Hill for the heads up on Suzy Banna because I haven't heard of it. This is the first time I've, I'm hearing about it. Maybe it's the first time you're hearing about it. And again, great time to be doing the traditional wet shave out there because there's so much available. And here's another great artisan shave soap being recommended by Andrew Hill. Suzy Banna sandalwood shave soap. Again, we'll have links to uh, Paul H. Films where you can check out his reviews on the Suzy Banna sandalwood and other scented shave soaps. Again, Andrew, thanks very, very much for the heads up on it. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up this week's look at new wet shaving gear. My thanks to everyone who contributed. Really do appreciate it. We'll do it again next week. Okay, let's check out some of these questions and comments. Viewer Mark Bagwell sent along this fascinating history regarding barber poles. And he writes, barber poles, what do they mean and what do the colors mean? 
To understand this, we have to go back to the Middle Ages when barbers were known as barber surgeons. That's right. In the Middle Ages, your barber not only practiced shaving, hair cutting, and hairdressing, they also served as surgeons and dentists. So they performed surgery as well as pulled teeth. They also performed such services as fire cupping, enemas, as well as bloodletting and leeching. It's the bloodletting that plays a big part in the pole design. It's during this service when the barber would direct the patron to extend his arm and hold onto a pole, thus giving the barber surgeon clear access to the veins for bloodletting. So how did this pole become synonymous with barber surgeons? We have to remember at this time the average person was illiterate and couldn't read a sign if you posted one but they knew what that pole meant. So barber surgeons would make a similar looking pole to hang outside to advertise their services. This brings us to the colors. The red means blood, such as bloodletting. The white represents bandages and the blue as in the human veins. Though back then, most of the poles were just red and white. No one is certain as to when the blue was added permanently. It wasn't until 1745 that barbers and surgeons were separated into two different guilds, but the barber kept the barber pole for identification purposes. And let's be honest, for many years, surgeons were in short supply, so many barbers kept up the bloodletting. Now that you know the history and meaning of the barber pole, you'll never look at it the same way again. A link will be added to the National Barber Museum, Check it out. It's very interesting. And we will have that link below. And Mark, thanks again for a really fascinating look at the history of barber poles. Really do appreciate it. I received this email from viewer David Richland with the subject heading, Puck Container Idea. And he writes, Hi, Mark. I was really interested in the ramekin you showed for your soap puck on the Monday morning mailbag for July 15th. Well, here it is right here. This came from American Vintage Soap Company. There it is right there. And here's one of their pucks that fits right in there like that. Yeah, it's an absolutely terrific, terrific little ramekin. And their soap pucks fit in there very, very nicely. Anyhow, David continues here. I like the idea of just having the puck without the original container but I prefer a container with a cover. I have Tabak uh, in the ceramic bowl with a lid and I love it. I searched for a ramekin with a lid on Amazon but couldn't find anything. I then looked at sugar bowls and while many had lids, they often had spoon slots and I didn't want to pay the high prices I found. Yesterday, I found this little gem at Goodwill. I knew immediately it would be perfect. I only paid three dollars. <laughs> wow! I also made another Franken puck by combining the last of my cello soap with Paraso white for sensitive skin and Cremo for sensitive skin. It created a great lather and felt really slick. I used my Henson mild razor and got an excellent shave. The total width of the container is just over four inches and the opening is three inches. Great find. I would like to get some pucks from Colette Classics or American Vintage. I'll have to keep my eye open for other great deals on sugar bowls at local thrift stores. All the best. Love Monday Morning Mailbag. Dave Richland. And again, Dave is over there at Deja Vu Hair Studio in Aptos, California, 275 Center Avenue, Sweet B. So if you're in the area, drop in to Deja Vu Hair Studio. And uh, David, great, great find. Again, you can find some really, really great wet shaving gear or stuff that becomes great wet shaving gear at thrift stores and Goodwill stores. Really, really fantastic. $3 for that. That's an absolutely great and fantastic find, David. Thanks very much for sharing it with all the viewers. Well, I just refreshed myself with some witch hazel just now. Really, very, very refreshing, especially in this warm weather. And that brings us to an email from viewer Jimmy V with the subject heading, Witch Hazel and the Zerady Wall. Hi, Mark. Happy Tuesday. Just thought I'd pass along some thoughts on witch hazel. My dad used to use it after shaving, but it had an amazing scent. I really wish I could remember the name or what the bottle looked like. 
one of life's mysteries. Phoenix Shaving Galactic Witch Hazel is 14% alcohol and comes in a spray bottle. It doesn't seem to have any odor at all, just like Thayer's Unscented. Witch Hazel does not have to contain alcohol to be considered witch hazel. The defining characteristic is the presence of the active compounds derived from the witch hazel plant. Alcohol is often included in traditional preparations for its preserving and astringent enhancing properties, but alcohol-free versions are also available and widely used. My flow with Thayer's or Phoenix Shaving Witch Hazel is the following. Shave with my normal four cold water passes, then two washes with a cold water washcloth to wipe away the remaining lather. This is followed by the alum block. While that is drying, I do my hardware cleanup. Use a light wipe with cold wet washcloth to clean off the alum. Then apply the witch hazel. If I'm not needing to apply a scented splash anytime soon, I'm done. I enjoy the way my face feels with just witch hazel on it. If I plan on going out right away, I just skip the witch hazel or use it, give it a bit of time to dry, then put on the splash. Just depends on the situation. Personally, alum is never going to be replaced by witch hazel. They simply do different things and aren't mutually exclusive. Wow, that is great, great advice regarding uh, witch hazel, alum use, and also some great background information on what is witch hazel because we've been having this discussion. So thanks very much for that, Jimmy. Really, really do appreciate it. Now, he continues here on a different note. Here's my Zerady wall. It's where I'll put any notes or such you send me. The George shaving tip letter is mounted on the wall in the den. The Zerady wall is the hall leading into the den. It's what you see when exiting the den after a great shave. I have one more to frame, just waiting for the frame to arrive so I can get it mounted up. Have a great rest of your week, my friend. Jimmy, Jimmy, I am so very, very flattered by that. That is really, really an honor. Thank you very, very much for sending along the photo and uh, allowing me to share with all the viewers out there. That is really, really something. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm speechless by that. I really am. I'm very honored and I'm very, very flattered. And again, thanks for a great email uh, regarding Witch Hazel and uh, thanks for the Zerady Wall. That is really, really an honor. Thanks again, Jimmy. Really do appreciate it. And that wraps up another Monday Morning Mailbag. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out all the wonderful artists and soap makers and sellers that you see displayed on the bottom of the screen right now. They make and offer some wonderful artisan shave soap. They also offer some wonderful wet shaving gear to enhance your traditional wet shave. The next time you're online, please take a moment, pay them a visit. I sure would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Also, check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Zerady, where you'll find all the Amazon listed products that I review on this channel, organized and categorized so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Hey, we have another double take cartoon puzzle this week. Try to find the differences between the two cartoon panels. If you need more time, just pause the video or try to find all the differences before time runs out. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.